Son. I thank you for the sacrifice on the cross for us. I thank you that because of what you've done, because of the price you've paid, we are here. We are gathered and we are, again, grateful. Thank you for your cross, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm. So, the reading today is going to be from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. So, this is a message on humility, understanding what true humility is, what is the example of humility. So, let's see what God's word says. It says, so that's page 984. Sorry, apologies. Check Bible. 984. That's Philippians chapter 2. It reads Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then they may be truly happy. By agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish, don't try and impress others. Be humble. Think of others as better than yourselves. But look, sorry, don't look only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name of all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We all know that when Jesus came down all those years ago, he didn't come as a king, but so he came as someone who was lowly. Um, other translations say he came as a servant. I like how the NLT says he came as a slave. You know? And that imagery of a servant, of someone who didn't come for their own purpose, but actually came to, to fulfill his father's will by serving others, is a great example of humility. So, what's Paul actually saying here? In Philippians, we realize that one of the prisoners. It's one of the letters where Paul wrote in prison to, again, a couple of leaders in Philippi. Now, what was going on around in Philippi wasn't quite easy for them. There was a lot of pagan worship, of course, it's a Roman colony. So there was a lot of pagan, again, god worship, idol worship, and many other things such, such as that. So the idea of Rome, a Roman colony, especially in Phil- as in Philippi, was the fact is that being a servant wasn't quite popular. It wasn't the status quo, it wasn't the norm to be lonely. It's actually just to be, again, elevated, to be prideful. Now, these believers in Philip have actually done something which, again, I think all of us as believers can take an example of. If you read in the first couple of verses, right, well, these are more rhetorical questions. If there's any encouragement for belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship and spirit together, any tender compassion. These are all things that the church in Philippi was showing. These are all the things that, again, the Philippians, again, when Paul went there, understood again that, again, they were given, they were given kind of arms to Paul, they were helping out Paul in his ministry, and many other things. So, what's Paul really trying to say to these Philippians? Why, why did Paul mention that passage about Christ's humility? Well, it goes back to what the Greek says about humility. 
Funny enough, when the Greek actually mentions the word humility, again, we get it from the word humiliate, humiliation. And we know that humiliation isn't very nice. It isn't nice to be humiliated. But the idea is this. Paul using the best example of humiliation is by Jesus Christ. Jesus being the very form of God. Jesus being the creator of all things. Humbling himself. Letting Romans beat him. Letting people spit in his face. Letting people even blaspheme his own name. So we understand that this, with that Greek word of humility, rooted from humiliate, that isn't an action, it's a mindset. That's why I said it's in our translation, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. It isn't an action per se, it's more of a mindset. And that's what Paul's kind of trying to get at when he's talking to the Philippians in this chapter. Now, again, out of our mindset, out of that mindset of humility, out of mindset of servanthood, things like love comes into it. Serving others. Again, showing compassion to others. Putting your own interests below others' interests. Those things come out of the mindset of humility, not in the actions themselves. Because we know that people may give to charity for their own gain. People might even, you know, try to start around and say, I'm the most humble person in the room. Already defeating the purpose of that point, of course. But again, it's a mindset. A mindset of constant lowering yourself. That realizing that, you know what? Jesus being high and exalted in heaven, who angels, he was with the angels from the very beginning, humbled himself, showing us like an example of what we should do as well. Now, continuing on this mindset, we realize that this mindset is not natural. It isn't easy to humble ourselves, especially let's think about our day-to-day life. Somebody really, we know we should be in a higher position, we know we deserve better. And we know we should also say something about it. But in some cases, maybe in the better case, be humble. To say, you know what, I know I deserve the position, but I'm not going to take it on myself, I'll wait. I will be patient. And that, again, shows true character. Sometimes, again, if you've got an opportunity, I'm not saying you be a door on that, but in some cases, it's better to be humble. It's better to lower yourself than to lift yourself up, even when it's a time where you think you may deserve more or better, because Christ deserves better. Christ deserves so much greater than us, but he came as a humble man, a man who was, again, as the Bible says, acquainted with grief, he was a man of sorrows. I, I love the phrase when he says again, the foxes of holes and the birds of nests, but the son of man of Noah's lay his head. Showing again that element of humility, showing that purpose of serving, not worrying about what he in his head, not worrying about, again, what he would wear, but worrying about his neighbor. And as Paul's talking to these um, Philippians, we know that in Acts chapter 16, I'm not going to go through the entire um, chapter now, but Paul wasn't really treated very well in terms of life. What happened? He was brought again to the officials. One of the things they brought him to was for this reason. He is not being lawful to the customs of Rome. He's not being lawful. He's not aspiring to our theology, our kind of culture. And what did they do? They beat him. They beat him. And while he was mistreated there, again, the church in Philippi, they showed love, humility. And they weren't a very rich church, we understand. Back in Philippi, you, again, it's, you don't have wealth like that. Especially as a crisp, this small little church, the wealth wasn't accessible like that. But they were very cheerful and again, as we read in a couple of Paul's letters, they were very generous. So again, as Paul's writing his letter, as Paul is teaching us that example of humility, we understand that, again, it's not about what we have now, per se. It's the mindset of heaven, the mindset of eternity. It's the mindset of Christ. But I want to get to the, the meat of the bone. Verse 6 to 8. If you look into our Bible, there's a 
um, sometimes an old hymn that we used to sing this, an old hymn that we used to sing as glory to God. And we would sing again songs about Jesus being crucified. Amazing grace, some songs we just sung now. But what really stands out to me is again Jesus putting on flesh. Jesus being fully man. The Bible says he was tempted in every single way. He knew what it was like to be tempted in different areas. We are tempted in. But yet, you know, in John 1, 1, he was God in the beginning. He was there in the beginning. And yet, when he came down, he felt everything. He felt pain. He felt hunger. He thirst. He was, again, tired. God didn't need to do that. He didn't have to do it. That's why I was talking to my friend earlier. I was talking about how the God of the Bible is a personal God. Other deities, they may be so far in heaven that you don't even know where they are. But a God in heaven above, who is God in the Bible, is Christ himself. He's close to us. That's why he dwelt among us. That's why he, again, as some say, tabernacle. He made his dwelling among us. And again, I think, if you turn to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, it gives a nice picture of that. So 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, about the purpose of Christ, about how that union with God isn't a separate thing, isn't a religion in saying you follow, but this is what God's plan was. The scripture tells us the first man became, the first man Adam became a living person, but the last Adam, that is Christ, became a life-giving spirit. What that basically means is this, when Adam came in, again, that fleshly desire of sin, Adam came that likeness of flesh, just like Christ, as he came down, came the likeness of flesh. And the difference between Adam and Jesus was this. When Adam came in, was created again, he had that fleshly desire. Again, we sin again. Because of Adam, we unfortunately suffer from that sin. We have that nature, that Adamic nature, if you may call it. But when Christ was quite special, not only he came to that, that flesh, but he also done something that no one could do obey the Father to the letter. And because he did that, because he obeyed him, lowered himself, what he promised us was the Holy Spirit. He became a life-giving spirit. That goes to how intimate our God is. That God stooped himself down to our level. God stooped himself down to where we are, in our brokenness, in our shame, in our pride, and met us where we are, and showed us love. And I think even carry on and say this, that sin is pride. Pride. Again, sin is rebellion, saying that we know better than God. That's what happened in the garden. Sin is pride. But humility is righteousness. Because we realize when we humble ourselves before God, we obey His command. We, we give Him glory as He meant to. And as I just want to finish off, I'm going to jump around a bit here. But what happened because He done that? What happened because he became a curse for us? What happened because Jesus died? What did God do? Well, God exalted him. God lifted him up and gave him a name which is above every other name. And that name is a name which is powerful. A name which we can proclaim and salvation can come. To a point where the apostle write that there is no name under heaven earth where men might be saved but by the name of Jesus. And it goes back to Psalm 147, yeah, Psalm 147, verse 6, about how God opposes those who are prideful, but give grace to the humble. And the idea of that, God exalted Christ. Christ didn't exalt himself. That's why I said it, it wasn't something he tried to get himself. That glory he didn't try to grab himself. He was glorified by the Father. Because that showed his obedience to God. So this is what we can do today. So what does that bring us? What, what do we do with this? Well, it's like this. 
As we look to Jesus' example of humility, we need to think of every area in our life where we can be a servant. And sometimes being a servant may mean you'll be humiliated. Yes, it may mean you've been looked at in a different light. It may even mean that, again, separation from others. Not because of who you are, but because of the decisions you make. But even despite all those things, loving one another, serving one another, showing everyone you can that Christ likeness is what God loves us to do. Again, as Paul says, he's become all things to all men, so that he may even win some to Christ. Becoming all things, that doesn't even mean oops, sorry about that. It doesn't mean about being becoming all things in terms of good things alone, but bad things as well. Paul's hated and despised in other places for the sake of Christ. Yes, he was loved in other places. Some even churches rejected his teachings. But for the sake of Christ, and by looking at that example, he stood firm and stood strong. So my encouragement today, stand firm on Christ. Looking at his cross, looking at that humility he showed, not as an example we can follow by ourselves, but using him as an example and asking him to strengthen us and give us that mind as the Bible starts to renew our mind daily. So let's not renew our mind and have that mind which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, we're going to sing a song.